candidates respond to the questions in the same order that they presented their, their platform to you. Um, and I will ask each candidate to come forward as I call your name. This is going to take a little time, folks, so if, I, if you would, brevity is, is the watch for us today, if you don't mind. Several questions kind of ask the same, uh, the same thing, and the question is, um, you have told the audience what's broke. They want to know what you're going to do to fix it. And we'll start with, uh, Mr. Bush is not here, we'll start with Mr. Hodges. Thank you. I'm going to assume that, that question is directed for taxes. I'm the only candidate so far that's uh, publicized a uh, tax reduction plan. I, uh, on day one, would try to uh, convince the county council. And I fully understand there's five members. It takes three to make positive change. I would try to advance an ordinance that requires us to reduce the tax credit rate by 5% per year for five years. We need to get spending under control. Now, that's not going to be easy, and I fully understand that. But I do think that we need to focus on it. When you get into budgeting, you need to do three things. Number one, you need to plan for at least some kind of small growth. We're going to have that. Hopefully, the bigger stuff will come at some point. But you need to use common sense, and you need to make tough decisions. We all know that there's been a lot of things going on here the last couple of years. We need to fine-tune our government machine in this county. We've got some positions we don't need, some very high-paid positions we don't need. We've got some things that are doing without high use library. Uh, obviously, you know, you've got a library that cut down the route. That's not appropriate. We've got a senior citizen's home that's cutting down on meals. But yet, we've got people that are overpaid walking around the hallways. And that's the type of thing that I would like to function and take a fun take. Uh, very large interest in it, work on hard and cut out some of the unnecessary positions. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, John. Well, there's two things that we can do and two things that we've got to do. The first is we've got to make sure we are more official with what we've got to work with. We've got to get taxes down to where they are Everybody's paying their fair share, but nobody's suffering and struggling, and uh, that's counterproductive. The, we need to look at everything we spend money on and make sure we get a uh, dollars worth of, of value for every dollar we spend. We need to look at what's a core function, what's the necessities, and deal with those, and then go to the options and even before we even consider uh, luxuries. And then we need to grow the tax base because that's the more you spread out the source of, of tax income, the less it is on everybody. And that you do that by economic development, not by adding households. That's like adopting children. That's not the way you save money, it's by making your family larger. You save money by making your income go up. So that's how we do that with the industrial development, sales tax growth and retail development, uh, any opportunities so that people uh, spend more money here in Jasper County that they make more here in Jasper County. Folks in the, uh, in the, in the interim, Reverend Gregory says, had up here to join us. And Reverend Greg, we'll, we're going to put you on the hot seat. The question was when you, uh, that we posed when you walked in, and we're going in the order we do in the FRC seat first, is that you have told the citizens of Jasper County what's wrong with county government. And the question is, what are your plans to fix it if reelected? And we're going to ask you to please limit your response to about one minute, please. That's hard. Both of them, that's what's. Can I do to do what? Say that again? You, you told us what the problem is. How are you going to fix it? How are we going to fix the county government? First of all, how to fix government is to try to find a way we can continue to get money or jobs that we're working so hard to bring in Jasper County to relieve the pressure of the taxpayers. <coughs> we have a problem that we, every time we seek something, uh, somebody bigger or somebody offering more than what Jasper County does to get the industry of uh, jobs that are trying to come here. The offer that we do, we do everything that we can to bring industry in Jasper County. But sometimes, you know, in the biggest, bigger part of South Carolina, the attraction is more better. The land, the opportunity to build it there is better than Jasper County. It's a little country area. We, we give land some things to help the jobs. 
but we're still working hard to bring more. Uh, let's see, Ms. Clark is not here. Uh, Mr. Reed, Hardyville Township. I see three things that uh, I'd like to address on whether we fix it or whether we go forward and was change or not. And, uh, and the first one is, is operate within our revenue. Uh, in the budgeting process, it's a good idea to have a target of uh, where you're going to go for your proposed expenses. And looking at your revenue, you need to look at the realistic revenue because there are some revenues that you never collect. So once you have a target, then you can look at all the different elements of that. And that's very important in the budgeting process. And one thing I wanted to remind everybody <coughs> excuse me, is the fiscal year starts July 1st. So the incoming candidates are going to inherit our current county council's budget that they will adopt on uh, July 1st. So that gives us about six months then after we take office if we want to do anything. The second thing then is improve fiscal efficiency. And that's simply talk to your department heads. Uh, it's more of a bottom up rather than a top down budget. You don't start with what you spent in the past and then you look at what more you need. I'd like to look at what do we really need. And then the last thing is improved communication. Uh, I am fairly good on the computer and I've gone to the county's website and it has a lot of things in there. But I'm wondering if all the people uh, that use the internet, and especially those that maybe don't have computers in their homes, how easy is it for them to get information out of the website? And I think that's an important thing. <coughs> Establish our goals, what is our mission, and what is the vision? And vision isn't what I tell you here or write down on a piece of paper. Vision is when I walk out in the hallway and get to go home tonight, and you turn to your neighbors and you say, this is what I think about that guy, or this is what I think about our county. That's truly what the vision is, not what we just say, or would like to say that it is. Um, Smallwood. Uh, we respect to what we think is wrong. And you know, um, I'm sure there are some things that are wrong. And I'm sure that when I sworn in on in January, I'm going to find some more things that are wrong. But I think I'm going to find some things that are right too. Everything isn't wrong here. There's some things that are right too. And I think one of the ways that we fix some of that is by communicating with our people. You know, when my mother was going to spank me, she always sat me down and talked to me about why I was getting that spanking. That was sometime more painful than spanking. So I think we need to communicate with our people. We need to find out what it is they want and what cost they're willing to pay for it. Because we do need jobs in this community. We do need um, a, a better look at budgets. I've been working with budgets for over 40 years. And I do know how to crunch numbers. I say that very proudly. And that's what drives your taxes, is how you develop your budgets. So that's one of the things we need to do to fix how Jasper County moves forward in the future. Talk to people, find out what they want, find out what they're willing to investigate, and then be very strategic and efficient in how you go forward with it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chips. <coughs> okay, again, excuse me, this is Pocatello Township. Thank you. Yes, as I pointed out earlier, uh, education is one of those things that is stickler for me that I think uh, requires some work. And it's not what I'm going to do, it's what I'm already doing. Uh, I'm on the board of directors of the United Way to Low Country that's partnering with uh, both Jasper and Buford County school districts. And uh, one of the goals is by 2018 to cut the dropout rate by 50%. Another goal is by, uh, by 2014, we want to ensure that all children entering into fourth grade are on reading level. So uh, again, I am already out there trying to make a difference in the community. What it's going to take is we're going to be out there trying to recruit 600 
mentors, readers, and tutors to make this happen. We're going to be going into the schools, working with the kids. We're going to be working with them after school, during the summer. Uh, we're going to be working with the YMCA, Boys and Girls Club. So again, it's, it, it's a community needing to stand up and recognize the fact that there is a need within our school, and we need to stand up and become a part of, of what's going to make a difference. Uh, we owe our kids that. So if they're going to have a future, we need to focus on them. The other thing as far as health care, um, I said again, we need to have a hospital, a certain level of care in Brisbane locale. Again, you identify the need, you, you work the budget, and then you, uh, then you uh, work with the uh, state uh, representative to, to identify that need. And you make sure that you work hard uh, representing the citizens to say that based on the population, the elderly population in this area, and where we're located very rural, that there's a need for a hospital here. So it's not about not having the money. We're getting plenty of money in Jasper County. It's all about what's being done with the money. Is it being allocated correctly? Is it being mismanaged? Maybe. But again, we owe it as public representatives to the citizens to represent your interests and not our own. Thank you. Mr. Yes. <laughs> many of you know how to pray. Pray for a port and a casino and then maybe we'll have all the money we need. You know, a lot of things that come in play when you talk about what are we going to do to improve. Well, first thing, we need to make good business decisions. Somebody said, well, you didn't vote for the budget last year. No, I didn't vote for the budget last year because I thought I made a good business decision not to vote for that budget. We was in a real crunch last year. And we added a position that I still, and I, everybody here knows, that I tried to stop that position from being filled, and I was not successful in doing it. That's one and a quarter mil. There was another department that we could have saved another mil. It is the worst time that I can think of to try to add taxes to the citizens anywhere in the United States. So we couldn't help that we inherited <coughs> debt service. We had inherited debt service of about nine mil, a million dollars a year almost. But we could look at this budget that we had and try to cut the operating budget but I could not get anybody to go along with me and do it. I was told this morning that my business experience that I had in my businesses on the outside was not necessarily good when it comes to making business decisions for the government. A business decision is a business decision. And it is one that a man needs to feel like he knows and he will live by what he does. One of the biggest problems we have is rural fire and EMS services. That's one of the biggest problems that we have in our county, is rural fire and EMS services. Since 2009, we've cut two and a half million dollars out of that budget. We could have hired three firemen for what we paid to add that one position last year. I, you know, I'm not going to buy it from you. If you like it, you like it. You don't. You don't. But I felt like I was making a good business decision at that time. I feel like now that it's still a good business decision. Now, the port is a big deal right now. It's kind of dead in the water. Charleston fights us a lot harder than Georgia fights us on the port. Our neighbor, Beaufort County, seems to fight us and everything, every endeavor that we try to undertake to make things better in Jasper County, it seems like we get fought by our neighbors in Houston County. Our low country economic alliance, they have done nothing for us in three years. In 2009, when I took office and could look at it, I was ready to get out the low country economic alliance. Now, finally, some of the rest of them are ready to get out the low country economic alliance. <laughs> They're ready to get out the low country economic alliance. 
and get into the Southern Carolina Economic Alliance, which has, which has more commonality of the businesses that we need in Johnson County than what we're seeing through low country economic lines. No, I'm sorry, okay. Don't see me out.